This is BBC News with the latest headlines for viewers in the UK and around the world. I'm James Reynolds. Indonesian rescuers detect a signal believed to be from the flight recorder of the Boeing passenger plane that crashed into the Java Sea shortly after takeoff with 62 people on board. Just days before it hands over power, the Trump administration is lifting long-standing restrictions governing the US relationship with Taiwan. U.S. prosecutors say they've made more than 80 arrests following Wednesday's riots at the U.S. Capitol. One of those detained was a man whose image was widely circulated on social media. At least four people have died as Spain is hit with its heaviest snowfall for 50 years. Hello and welcome. The Indonesian Navy has recovered pieces of fuselage and some body parts from the sea off the coast near Jakarta, where a Boeing 737 aircraft crashed on Saturday. Rescuers also said they had detected a signal from the plane more than 20 metres below the surface. 62 people were on board the Sudi Jawa air jet, which was flying to Borneo. Mark Nobel reports. Could these be vital clues as to what happened to Surawajaya Air Flight SJ-182? Divers from 10 Navy ships assisted by military helicopters are slowly piecing together the wreckage from their ongoing search of the waters where they believe the plane fell. As the flight tracking app flight radar shows, four minutes after the 26-year-old Boeing 737 took off from Jakarta on Saturday afternoon with 62 passengers on board, including seven children and three babies, contact was lost as it reportedly plunged 3,000 metres in less than a minute. Before its disappearance, its operator said no problems had come to light. Based on the information I have, the plane was in a good condition when it was flown from Pontianak, Pangkalpinang, and this was the second route back to Pontianak. There shouldn't have been any problem, and the maintenance report was also fine. In a significant development, the chief of the country's search and rescue agency has told reporters his teams have detected signals in two points, which could be the plane's black box, which he is now investigating. The black boxes are going to be critical because that's going to determine whether or not there were sounds in the cockpit of perhaps an explosion. They're going to look at the wreckage and find out how the metal was bent, what was bent in or out, which could be a potential explosive device. Uh, were there missiles in the area? We saw that just over a year ago with the Ukrainian 737 that was shot down. Relatives and friends of those on board now have a painful wait for more answers. A Jakarta police spokesperson said rescuers have handed over a bag containing passengers' belongings and also another they believe contains body parts. For Jakarta's residents, with budget travel now an increasingly regular feature, fears over flight safety have resurfaced. The flight schedule is too packed. They touch down, then take off, touch down, then take off again. Maybe there wasn't enough maintenance. We are shocked because we always use that flight. The crash is very sad. After flight SJ-182 delayed its takeoff due to heavy rain and never sent a distress signal, what these rescue teams can now salvage from the seas is more important than ever. Mark Lobel, BBC News. We can speak now to Australian aviation expert and broadcaster Geoffrey Thomas. He joins us from the town of Walpole near Perth. Mr Thomas, thank you. I, I wonder what are you able to conclude from the early reports which have been coming in from Jakarta about this crash? James, uh, it, there is scant detail as, as, as yet. There was no um, call to ATC of any problems, although that's not necessarily an issue because when um, pilots have a problem with an aircraft, uh, the first thing you do is uh, save the aeroplane before you uh, communicate. Um, so that's possibly uh, not, we can't read too much into that. Um, it appears that whatever's happened was catastrophic and very rapid. Um, uh, there is a possibility of an explosion um, and that can't be ruled out at this stage. Also, there may have been an issue with the rudder, a rudder actuator of the aircraft, because the aircraft twisted and turned 
quite violently on its plunge uh, down uh, into the sea. So it, there's possibly there's a mechanical issue there, a failure of some kind. Or the other possibility is a massive uh, str a lightning strike from a super bolt that's uh, uh, caused uh, the uh, aircraft to be lost. Uh, but very early days at this stage, and it may be some time before we get some real clear uh, direction on this one. Tell us about the aircraft. It's a Boeing, but not, of course, the MAX, that model which crashed twice and put Boeing into such difficulty. Look, indeed, uh, there's four there's four essential versions of the of the 737. There's the original model built in the 60s. We call that in the industry the Jurassic. Um, this was a classic, which which was the next uh, upgrade, a significant upgrade, uh, which was in the early 80s. Uh, this was a 737-500. The next generation after that was the is was called, in fact the next generation, the NG, and that's the one that's used extensively throughout the world with airlines like Ryanair. Um, but both the classic and the new generation both have excellent safety records. Uh, they, they're workhorses of, of airlines around the world, do multi, many, many flights every day. Um, it's a good aeroplane. Budget carriers have grown in Indonesia as people have wanted to travel and have had the money to travel. Do these operators obey proper national and international safety standards? Look, the track record has not been good, and there are reasons for that, because in Indonesia, uh, a lot of the runways are... Uh, are not to international standard. They don't have overruns. They're shorter than they should be. They're not grooved, which is important because you get a lot of thunderstorms. And the navigation aids aren't as good as you would get, say, in Europe. So there are there are um, other circumstances which uh, cause Indonesia not to have a good record. But yes, to the point, um, there have been a lot of accidents uh, uh, because there are a number of low-cost airlines in Indonesia and certainly corners have been cut in the past. Although this airline uh, so far has got quite a good safety record. Would you expect Indonesia to call in regional or international help in its investigation? Typically, it does. In fact, it leans on Australia quite a lot. And in fact, Australia, Australia's CASA, uh, our regulator, uh, has in fact done extensive work with the Indonesians. And certainly, the the standard of uh, investigation in Indonesia and oversight in Indonesia is much much higher than it has been in the past. And uh, but they still do call in experts. And of course, at the same time, you're going to get uh, Boeing involved in this. Uh, you'll get uh, CF. The French American conglomerate that build the engines, they'll be involved. So you'll get you'll get quite a few international players involved in this investigation simply because they own the airline, own the aircraft or they own the engines. Jeffrey Thomas, thank you so much. Pleasure.